best of one lower bracket once again. RNG against the side of Entity. Jonathan, I've got one question for you because it is an SCATR. What does every pub player say after a Dota 2 game in the SEA server? It felt like a 1v5. It felt like a 1v5. And right now for Xnova, it must really feel like a 1v5. He's literally out there by himself. He saw Somnus, his head set the cat ears. He said, screw that. I don't want this guy playing with me. I'm going to the booth by myself. And John, I think it's fair to say, in the history of Dota, if Xnova and RNG win this game, he could literally tell people he 1v5 on the main stage. <laughs> Technically true, which is the best kind of uh, correct you want to be there. Let's see if RNG can get that done. I mean, for Entity's side, they've got this really aggressive draft, right? Lots of push potential coming out here. Going back to what they love, they get the Lycan out for pure. And they've got the Toby Brew, and they can just kind of force these fights out early. Take some really fast objectives once they have the summons ready, once they've got that Hump the Dominator ready and just kind of get the familiars going. Like, it doesn't take that long for these objectives to melt once Entity does start to go. And RNG, they've got to be a little bit cautious. They do have that early timing lined up as well. I love the point the panel made about the Lich Frost armor kind of slowing down some of that physical output that these uh, minions will do to you. So you do have some save on hand, but you're going to be buying some space out for the Terrible. It can be a little bit hit or miss depending on how well you use your Metamorphosis, if you get caught off guard, how well your lane goes. And so again, laning's going to be a really big part of this one for both teams. Absolutely. We'll see how it does go down. Of course, both teams going to hang around the mid lane for now. Just chilling out. Again, Ward's not going down. Wolves will scout out just a little bit from the side of Entity. Who they can spot out as they will see Chalice. The young Lord, though, he has that atrophy aura. Not really the kind of target you want to try and make the jump on. Bottom side. I'm going to see Toby. And that Brewmaster, but. Seems like Toby going to be just fine. In fact, Stormstormer and Kataomi are going to bully away the side of RNG in this bottom side. To be able to get away with two boundaries of their own. In fact, make that three for the side of Entity. So RNG only able to pick up one on Ghost. Just a little bit of a stronger start out for Entity. Going to have that added gold down mid, of course, where you do want to get as much as possible out for, from Stormstormer. As Sheepo called, I think Stormstormer again on that visage, he's just going to be looking to play pretty fast. He's got a lot of varied build-ups to go for. Somnus can still kind of hold this lane. It's not the worst matchup in the world. You are going to be annoyed heavily by the Grave Chill, but the wave clear is there for Somnus, and you can just kind of poke and prod, especially while you don't have Grave Keepers up. You should trade fairly fine. Absolutely. So it doesn't end up going here for Somnus. Storm Storm should be just fine as well on this visage. Just look at the, maybe the bot lane here, Jonathan. You've got Toby and Kataomi against Ghost and X Nova. Seems like a bit of an annoying lane here for Toby and Kataomi. I mean, against the Lich, it's just never really fun just copying that much of the Frost Blast over and over again. Ghost should have a decent enough lane, I believe. I mean, you can get aggressive with Toby with the Tiny, but you might need a few levels before you do get gone. It's going to take a little bit more to get that magic damage going there with the combination on your Tiny, of course. So you're going to just need to soak up, pull that lane. Not something the Brewmaster loves to do, sharing a lane, sharing EXP. Because you do want to rush into that level 6, you want to rush into maybe a value point in your Cinder Brew, start to burn away at Ghost, pull that off, and it's going to be harder for him to trade. It will. Because how's that final lane going? Top lane, Pure and Fishman against Chalice and Kaka. It's actually probably the slowest lane on the map right now. Like, you've got an unborn. In fact, oh. I say that, but they are going to land a very nice Fisher here onto Pure. Body blocks out as well. Chalice! Able to find a perfect block and, and actually apologies to the side of Entity for the caster curse there. John, I did say it was the most boring lane. Apparently not. Yeah, this can get pretty action-packed. A nice simple block. You've got good damage coming out. You're very durable in the front. But a lot of these heroes coming out from RNG in the top lane. And there's really not too much Fishman can do to aggress back, right? It's not the most aggressive thing in the world. The Lycan plus Ancient Apparition lane, something Chalice can really just stand back, keep spamming out the Firestorms, and not really care, not really be punished for. You could leave this guy solo in lane. Kaka is just getting a pull off, getting his own EXP going, so you're finding all, you're ticking all the boxes in this lane for RNG, and you're just managing to get that build if you want. Yeah. Mid lane, a very slow affair between Somnus and Stormstormer. The runes aren't going to spawn up, so both of them should be able to find one for themselves. The Stormstormer puts the hand up, get a high five for himself. Somnus will take the other water in on the top side. The bottom lane, like going back to this Brewmaster Tiny combination, like at what stage do you think they can start moving? Because you do see Toby with the Cinder Brew, which does imply they want to get aggressive, and it's it's very effective with all the magic damage you do have against a hero like the Terror Blade. But at what point do you think they really start to get moving here in this lane? 
level three timing, maybe level four timing on your spells. Uh, that's where it starts to feel a little bit more comfy to try and burn down. The issue is if you don't manage to get that magic damage off, it just yes. goes back to having a lich. You're going to be cut off with a frost blast. You're going to have the frost shield down the line. Affects Nova Fields and Etu. Ghost. Up a fair bit, but it's going to be just fine to back his way up. Just the meta, just in case he needs it, but he'll be using it to farm instead. Seems like for now, Entity can't really force too much. Yeah, just gonna have to allow a little bit of build up and go. This lane is going a little bit slower. You know, it's not exactly free farm right now for our Terrorblade, so you are slowing down that pace here for Ghost quite nicely in comparison to what you are getting out for Pure. And Pure he did die earlier, but he is working the lane a lot better. It's hard to shove out a Lycan as well. I mean, you've got a lot of regen on hand and are quite durable. And Chalice has been pretty much left alone. Hawk is just stacking and pulling and soaking EXP, but after that kill opportunity, just kind of holding back. So return now, Kaka is going to make his way back over to the top lane, but not sure what he can get done here. A bit of harassment out onto Fishman. See the courier, it seems. Kaka maybe just trying to cut it off. Seems like Pure is well aware that the courier has been spotted. But Kaka still going. Does actually find Fishman with the Fisher. Might have enough damage, but just needed one more. Not quite enough here for Kaka. Unable to find any of the couriers either. Just really finding nothing at the top lane, but quite a bit of harassment out at least onto Fishman. Yeah, it opens up the lane a lot for Chalice, so 27 to 9 now. Again, you're not really threatened by the Lycan, you can't really threaten the Lycan yourself. But you are keeping Fishman away and you're cutting off the EXP of that AA. You want to work onto that level 6, you need a way to soften up these targets. With that Ice Blast, it's going to take a little bit longer than this game for Fishman. Pure, just going to need to try to get what he can. Bottom lane. Here we go again. Toby trying to move in onto X Nova, but X Nova actually just turning around. Harassing Toby back, and there he was alone in all this, so can't go too far as the Brewmaster. This is allowing Ghost to a pretty free laning stage. Like, just knowing that you don't have the support of Kataomi around, who is currently just pulling the creep wave behind the bottom tier 1 tower. Trying to reset the creep equilibrium here for his Brewmaster. Let's do so very effectively. Speaking of quiet lanes, I mean mid lane, Somnus and Stormstormer, it's kind of trading CS evenly. Somnus currently 6 CS ahead of Stormstormer on the Visage. There is going to be a rotation out from Karka on the Earthshaker. It's not an easy target to try and burst down the Visage. Karka not going to be able to quite find the angle for it. But he might just stick around for the power rune. But bottom side, X Nova. He's going to get spotted out by Kataomi with a nice toss back. But X Nova, he could just TP away. It's just that easy. Just bails out, nothing to stop that. Seeing the commitment from the Avalanche toss. So he's got room. They don't find anything for the trouble here on to Entity getting the rotations out. Somnus is still getting his farm. You're buying a lot of space out for Ghost. Chalice has a free lane as Pure can't really stop that Underlord. And he's, managed, he's already has that Vanguard. So you really can't poke him. You can't even threaten him with a Lycan in. You can just kind of work that lane. You're, you're holding off from Pure hitting his level 6, from building into his own Dominator, and as long as that timing's thrown off, got a lot of room. Moving in onto Pure, very nice Fisher out onto the Lycan once again, and Chalice, he's getting so much damage out. Pure needs a way out of this, needs TP's in, almost going down. Chalice, he's going to try and mount for this one, but it's not going to work out. Karaomi, he was there with the Avalanche just in the nick of time, and Pure, he will barely survive this. He's gonna hang around in the lane. He does have good regen up with a Feral Impulse at 2 and the Helm of Iron Will. Good timing from Entity to kind of jump in and save. They can't really find any punishment coming out, but neither can RNG. A bit low on mana, but needing a little bit more time to regen up as well before fully committing. Aka could try to work an angle here if he wants, though. And hey, again, you still got Fishman around, and he'll spot out Kaka. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Toby. Getting a crest on here by X Nova and Ghost, but we'll be able to back off in time. Playing Kaka, still looking for an angle here onto Pure, but can end up going for anything here. He doesn't really find what he needed. Meanwhile, Somnus has infiltrated that dire jungle. Just gonna try and annoy perhaps the Lycan. Somnus, the most farmed here on the map right now, just very confidently moving across. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Toby, still being harassed out by X-Nova, but here comes the turnaround from Kataomi and Toby. They'll just work together onto the Lich with the Frost Shield. It's just so much damage reduction. They'll move it into the Avalanche. They will find the TB. Where the Ghost, the Fisher is there, Toby. He is going to drop. It's not a good trade whatsoever. I mean, you've got X-Nova, but you lose your Pulse 3 Brewmaster. It's just not great news.
It's not what you want to see. You need that EXP, you need that farm up on the Brewmaster. You want that level six up. You want to be able to be chaotic in these fights. RNG just find a punishment. It takes so much commitment to kill, just kill off X Nova. And even now he can just go and top up Somnus over here with his bot. Absolutely. We go again, Kaka on the bottom side in trouble. Fly himself off, it seems like. He'll be just fine to do so. Around to even just soaking spears. Now Somnus being chased down by Stormstormer. Get those familiars in range. Just try and still creep away here from Somnus. He's just being very, very patient. Slowly creeping their way forward into that Radiant Jungle. Not allowing Somnus the free farm he's looking for. Somnus actually sticking around on the left track, but not really much he can do at the moment to try and force them back. He doesn't quite have enough damage yet, I think, by himself, considering the build-up on Storm Stormer, going for two points in the Grave Keepers, maxing out the Grave Chill, he can just easily run away from the sun. So he's just going to be able to take control, keep farming up, cutting away a source of farm for the side of RNG. RNG, though, they've been they've left Chalice alone up top. He's just pushing in, again, with that Vanguard build-up, straight into the Crimson Guard. The, the minion play coming out from Entity, it's not going to do as much once you've got that AoE effect on a, a Crimson Guard. It's just going to block so much of that damage. It will. At least be able to set up for that bottom tier 1 tower, but the top tier 1 also dropping to Chalice. If you force out a cliff here on the bottom side, Toby will just get to work and you've got the familiars there. So it's not going to take too long to get this tier 1 tower down, but again, next rather chalice is already pushing that top t1 for an even trade back bottom lane who they got it's gonna be kaka on the earth shaker he does get picked off here by kataomi does end up going down very easily it's, it's not the biggest kill in the world it does still open up this bot tower push although down the mid and we've got fishman stun will land they'll find the AA. a decent trade by either side trading supports 2k advantage now for rng Entity, I mean, they've got this timing throughout the mid game with this push style lineup, so I don't think they're panicked about this. It's all about just waiting it out, hitting that mid game, and getting the work done after that. I still worry about just how well Chalice is farming, though. Again, once you've got the Crimson Guard up, can you really push towers that fast with the summons? Because they don't have the highest damage. That's fair. It's, it's just about spreading that damage out across multiple units and running down, but you get counteracted by just this one item coming out from Chalice. Not not to mention the fact that after three or assault is going to be annoying on Steve. So you've got a lot of ways of just stopping that. I and mean, Pure is trying to shove Chalice away, but it's not really enough to stave him off. They're trying to go down bot again. They've got good forward vision here from Enski. Really nice forward war to just keep playing in this area. But they haven't been able to get the big kills they want. They're stalling out the Shaker blink timing, which is nice, but it doesn't feel like that's the biggest tool for RNG at the moment. They're looking elsewhere. Kaka is still hanging around the bottom side, waiting for that creep wave. He said they don't want to allow the Earth Shaker that free kind of farm and Entity are certainly still standing very aggressively around that bot lane. He mentioned though, it doesn't seem like RNG really mind. You focus on the Earth Shaker, that's fine. We've got three cores that farm the top side of the map. It's no problem whatsoever. It's mid lane. They will move in on Somnus, but it's out of range for Toby to make the jump in on. He's just trying to focus down that mid-T1 tower. Stormstormer is going to be there as well. Chalice, he's going to be around to defend. And this is how it becomes very, very challenging. Against the Underlord, some things just don't change. It's just very challenging to try and even think about going for that mid-T1. They've got really good vision coming out here from the side of uh, Entity as well, walking back. So at the very least, they won't see anyone that kind of wants to sneak around. And they're going to be able to protect that sentry. They can't shot totally down. They do mid lane, Toby, just gonna drop on the Brewmaster all alone. Entity, they were focused at the bot lane again. It seemed like they were trying to go after Kaka in the meantime, and Toby just gets sacrificed for nothing. They have to be careful about working the map that way. I get what they're trying to do. They're still maintaining that control on the bot jungle, but they kind of split apart. And you are trying to buy some space out here for your liking. Yes, that is giving some space. Fishman. Not the biggest kill in the world, but they'll take it, it seems, as Kaka will continue, even popping the Echo Slab. Just in case, just in case he was going to juke them out, he'll just pop the R, and sadly, Chalice is the one to take the kill on the uh, the post round for John, so he won't secure the kill himself, but you'll take what you get. It's worthwhile, and that, that's the full Crimson Guard out for Chalice. So again, the next time that pump up comes out from Entity, the damage is just heavily cut off. And now they get this opportunity to push mid, they've got level 3 Edict. 
they can just mount their own objectives alone and see coming in. Yeah, they're coming in onto Chalice, but he's such a tanky boy. He's got that Crimson Guard up, so you're just literally doing no damage with these familiars or the wolves. They'll keep trying to move in, but where's the damage output? Kaka, he'll just block the path. Chalice just walks out. No problem. Yeah, literally zero damage from a lot of that. Like he just stood there. The magic damage was doing work. And you kind of want to play around that aspect, but this is a support time. You know, you're not going to be having that opportunity to have that fast blink timing, to have the levels to maximize the avalanche cost. And just after a bit of a reset back in, the tier one just gone. The power of flash track, the power of RNG's own push style with this lineup comes into play. At what stage do you think like Entity can start really fighting back with their own draft here, John? Like, uh, what stage do you think they can group up and just start going for those big tier ones in the mid lane, or perhaps even the tier two tails? In fact. You might have to hold that thought, John, because we've got a big smoke coming out. RNG, smoke to four, moving their way down towards the bottom side. They're going to find the Visage. That's a big target. But they will not connect with the Pit of Malice. Stormstormer with some very good micro. Now Kataomi from the backside with a nice avalanche into the Ice Blast onto Chalice. But where's your follow-up damage? It's not there yet. They'll chase down Somnus on the left track, but he's going to be just fine. In fact, Kaka, he's coming in from the backside. But who will they aim? Kaka in trouble is going to drop on the Earth Shaker as X Nova now is completely surrounded and will also go down. In fact, Chalice still trying to tank up, but they're off to Somnus. Somnus, he's a Giga Chat. He might be able to fight back, but not quite. They've got so much damage. In fact, even Ghost showing up at the last seconds of the team fight needs to back his way out. And he will, but it's still a massive win for the side of Entity. They managed to find the big kills they wanted. RNG were the ones trying to be aggressive. They're looking for that kill, but they don't manage to burst down Stormstorm fast enough. And they miss that angle. Like, they don't get the Pit of Malice off. A really great use of the micro here from Stormstorm to just drop those familiars down. Very clumped up from RNG. And it just gets cut off like that. You have to be careful about grouping so tightly up against that Visage. You look at the replay right now, and just a very nice avalanche from Kataomi. Just sets up the team fight, and you, you notice the way they just ignore Chalice altogether. Like, everyone's just, screw the Underlord, don't touch him. Go for the big ones. And Kaka, he did try to save the day in the back side of that team fight, but it feels like it allowed another opening for the side of Entity at the end of the day. Yeah, it just allowed him to kind of come in and take over. Once you do understand that the Underlord is not the target, everyone else falls fast, especially once that Crimson Guard active fail, fades. So, RNG, I mean, it, they're still getting some room out here to farm up on Ghost Dragon Lance up, going for a quick Sanj into the Scotty here just to have a little bit more stats. You still have this blink threat from Kafka eventually coming through though. X Nova in big trouble. The familiars again landing perfectly. They'll need to let X Nova die. Skataomi looking for a bit more, but doesn't have the spells to throw out. So Kaka gonna be just fine. They did not have the avalanche. You saw Chalice trying to run his way up the river, but just unable to get there in time as well. And it's starting to feel like Entity is starting to hold their ground a lot better. They're, they're using this visage really well to keep baiting in these plays. And again, just these stuns out from Storm Stormer to cut off that aggression. It's so much time that RNG isn't getting as much out of. Because you are finding room to farm up on Ghost, on Somnus. But you're not able to group around and play with your entire team. They just, you have to wait for the respawn, you have to look for that pickoff once more. And it allows Entity to just catch up really nicely. Full Helm of the Overlord up on Pure. Uh -oh. So you've got the Ancient Creep to kind of drag around. The Thunderhide Creep's nice. Ancient Black Dragon. Granite Pole and Salt's are really good to tank up. And e eventually even the Ags up on Toby's going to be nice to have as well with a Primal Companion. So things are starting to line up. The Storm Stormer, his own Ags a little bit further off. But we see we saw how much damage a Visage can have. Once that axe is up as well, it, it'll just force even more out of RNG's economy. More investment. Oh and Somnus, they're gonna find Toby. They'll drop the Echo Slam and Toby's gone. Because they just weren't expecting the rotation from Somnus. Did have that uh, the Ancient Black Dragon around him, and obviously he can't do much to help him out. And well, Toby, he will drop once again. And that's a really important kill for RNG. Blink up for Kaka off the back of that. They still have to wait for the Slam to camp, come back off, of course. It's gonna take some time can maybe look for that opportunity unless they find a really good angle just to enchant and sl and go for the fissure but you've got more play now in RNG. you've got more ways to be aggressive and your offlane isn't really the most playmaking here for chalice it, it just sits back and farm so a lot has to come out from kaka with a blink up he can kind of set that up set that up for his team the side of ntt again they're not lagging too far behind fairly even game six to six 2k leads the lane 
Right about to break out. The wolf form was popped here by Pure as he will try to rush forward. He would love Somnus. It's a massive pick off. Taka, he'll cop the ice bust at Somnus. He's the real target. Where's the help? He's popped the bloodstone. Trying to survive. In comes the dark portal. Now a nice fisher. Taka, he may have saved the day, but Somnus is still dropping. May eventually go down as Toby. He's trying to get the work done, but where's the damage output? Somnus, he's going to survive on the left track. They don't have enough to finish the job off. Somnus, how does he walk out of it? He's alive. It's Karaomi. He's the one to drop. Chalice, he makes it just in the nick of time, and they keep going for more now. Fishman, also being, being caught out on the AA, he is going to go down. It's it's just that timing out from Chalice and the great use of Somnus with that Bloodstone. Like you just can't kill him. He's just stealing too much or no BKBs to stop him from doing damage. So he's always going to sap some HP back. And it just goes back to how durable you are with the Underlord around you. Once Crimson Guard is up, I mean, you just don't die. There's just not enough throughput from the side of Entity. They don't have that first damage lineup here. They certainly don't. Chalice just making it just the nick of time. It's buying so much time for Ghost as well on this TB. Like, we haven't talked about this man whatsoever, but he's just been hitting creeps this whole game, and it's kind of being ignored. Top of the net worth board, and he has been there for quite a while, and you kind of think with the draft of Entry, like, it, it may not have its own timing, but you, you don't want to miss that big timing in the mid game, right? Because once you hit the late game, sure, you're not out of the game, but you're against a Terror Blade, and he's just kind of one of the kings of the ultra late game as a, as a hero, right? Like, just so hard to deal with. Yeah, I mean, you have some answers on hand, like the AA can make it a little bit more annoying to hold on to your life for the Sunder. Yeah, and they go again, Kaka gonna find Kataomi, so they do at least find themselves to support Tiny. Not the biggest deal in the world, but perhaps they could think about Roshan. Yeah, it's not gonna take too long, Ghost already in the pit with his Metamorphosis up, and Entity, it, for their part, it does feel like you rely on that Tiny to come in with the Avalanche Toss for the control. You can try to scout out here with Storm Stormer and his familiars, but it doesn't feel like the follow through is there without the fight. Roshan gonna go down basically for free here as Anthony just do not feel confident to try and make their way in. It's the first Roshan of the game, the way of RNG. Ghost with even, just even safer now on this Terror Blade. It hasn't felt like he's been in any danger this whole game, and well, now you've got to kill him twice somehow. I can't be there to make sure that. Ghost doesn't get jumped by himself, and again, I, I just question what the answers are going to be here for this carry. It, you need to hit your own timings here on Entity. Um, maybe a couple of BKBs would help. We're seeing Pure go for the AC, just kind of tank up a bit, up against the damage of Ghost, but that's not an answer for Summons, because you are kind of counteracting the Terra Blade by more durability, but uh, this Leshrac will still have free reign, and Somnus is going for his own BK. So he's really not going to care about the jumps in. He's not going to care about the Brewmaster splitting apart, he's trying to hold him off. Oh, Echo Slam, top lane. They do end up finding Storm Stormer. He's fine for now, however, in Frick Kaka. He's the one getting targeted with the Ice Blast, with the Cold Feet, but he's going to be just fine. In fact, now Chalice, he's being targeted, trying to go through the Dark Rift, through the portal, but they're just stunning him up. He's still a very tanky target. Chalice is still trying to go through the door, but it's just closing on him. They will not let the man go through. Yeah, good punishment out from Entity. Seeing that opportunity to jump in, knowing that there's no real follow through from Kaka there. And that challenge is basically just Fiends gating by himself. No backup. A bit confident coming out, trying to jump a visit. Storm Stormer, even without you know all this farm that we saw from her last visit game, he's still durable. He still has maxed out Gravekeeper's Cloak, and you can't really burn through that all too fast as an underlord you have a lot of you you can hold your ground really well there as well it's very very tough do you have to go ahead here rng who are having a few issues 1k advantage still there nine to seven in favor of rng they do still hold on to the ages entity though definitely clawing their way back into the game now with the agonim set drop on the visage even more annoying to try and deal with storm stormer throughout this game rng it's a lot of faith in their TB to carry them through as he's working on towards that eye of Scotty here on Ghost. On the other side of things, naturally pure, gonna be going for the AC on the like and pretty standard build up here for this like. We'll have it very soon. In fact, I believe it's on the Korea now. Just gonna feel a lot better in trying to push against that Crimson Guard at the very least. And again, just amping up your durability up against Ghost. He has been left alone for a long time, but has lagged behind pure now in terms of overall in that work. Ags out on Toby now as well. Immediate smoke out from Entity. 
They managed to find the angle here, RNG. It feels like they've sat around for a long time. You've got the Lesh, you've got the TV. You could try to push, but they're still farming and Entity's ready to go. They are. Four man smoke up. Through the backside, in the Radiant jungle they go. They'd love a mid T1 tower, but they'll have a team fight more before that. Ghost, he might bait for the team. His RNG is smoked right behind him, and it seems like Entity, they know something is awry. They will not risk it, they are just gonna back their way out. RNG, they'll wrap around the left side of that mid river. Radiant just behind Ghost, trying to force a fight. Radiant if you've got the TB, it's the, it's the bait everyone loves to try and go for, but it's not gonna be that easy to take him down Radiant with the Aegis up. Meanwhile, on the backside, Entity on the other side of things in the Radiant Jungle, hanging around. Sending Toby's remnants in. Oh. In they go. Kataomi is there with the Avalanche and the toss-up. Somnus, he'll get the BKB up in time. Still perfectly healthy, but is he really? The Millie's... Oh, boy, he's down. Kaka, he tried to go for the Echo Slam, but it does not help in the end, and he's dropped as well. There's just so much damage now flying out from Entity. So they've got the Chain Frost down onto the Underlord. That's going to be another, as Chalice just cannot get away. They just melt. That was really split up from RNG, and Entity were in a really good spot, just holding that high ground very well, killing very patiently, and just kind of drew them in. They had vision on the high ground when the smoke broke. Chalice was just a little bit too far to try and help keep Somnus alive. Like, he did just melt to the silence of the grave coming out there from Storm Stormer and his axe, and it, it was just overwhelming. Like, RNG can't afford to stay that far apart in two separate fronts to try to make this work because once they see the Underlord's not even keeping anyone alive you can just easily melt that DPS down. Yeah. Certainly so. We do see a replay here and a Somnus just getting abused by these familiars just so far away from his team. Even Kaka forced to Echo to try and help him out but just could do nothing. Very rough affair here for the side of RNG. Is just so many units try and focus down on these team fights as well. It's like who do you actually focus? It's hard to call. I mean, it does feel like Storm Stormer is actually the big threat, especially if you can just zip around with Sonic's Grave, you know, start to spam around the Soul Assumption fully maxed out now, get the Familiars to resummon and get the stuns off. It's really difficult as long as the Visage is there, but it doesn't feel like you have the steadiest answer to the Visage. Like, focusing him down is just going to give so many opportunities for everyone else to fight in. So I think they've just got to look for a pickoff. Maybe just killing off Fishman might give them enough confidence, taking away that Ice Blast, which just amps up all that output from Entity, makes it simpler to look for those kills. There you go, mid lane again. This could be another great team fight. If Entity can find a way to try and force this as Ghost. Still hanging around. Doesn't have the Aegis this time around. And could be in big, big troubles. They do make the jump in. Kataomi is there with the Avalanche Toss. And now the Ice Blast to fly through. He's copying a fair bit. Ghost, what do you do about this one? He'll go for the Sunder. Meanwhile, on the backside, Pure. He's been caught out. X Nova holds him down. They just burst him down on the Lycan. So this time around, Entity getting a little bit too overly confident. And RNG, they were ready for it. I love that they managed to get that Wraith Pack going now this time as well. So they mitigate a lot of that burst onto Ghost, give him enough time to just underway. And the A doesn't really stop you from health swap. So you're not really affected by the Ice Blast. You force a lot of attention on one big tanky target. And, you know, Ghost is extremely tanky now with the Scotty, Dragonlance, and SNY. Now that gives them the opportunity to push for a tier 2. A little bit of a split push going on down bot. Katoomi just keeping that bot lane shoved in. But you've got that full aggression now from RNG. They've, they've got the Lesh Wreck around. They really want to fully commit an entity. They can scout around. And Storm Storm is still really strong. He does manage to get in. But mid T2 tower just not going to last. RNG happily take it away. The on the sidelines just waiting. Have that perfect opportunity to try and move back in and force another fight. Still 1k ahead is, it, is the side of entity. But they are slowly losing map control now. And so it'll be a bit of a rough time now going into RNG's end of things again. You, you're still trying to deal with the, this TB in a way. The Pure is the highest net worth on the, on the board, but it just doesn't matter if you get caught out. And they just have the lockdown here with Kaka and X Nova. And of course, Chalice as well with the Pit of Malice. So many tools available for RNG and for Entity. And this is where you start to get a little bit concerned about scaling. Onto the late game. Uh, onto the mid to late game part, you just feel so much more confident. On the Terrorblade, you, you kind of get second wind on the Lashrak once BKBs start to fade away, and we don't even see any initial BKBs yet. 
current entity, so not an immediate worry, as you will still have some long charges on Pure, waiting for the recipe to be finished up. But as it drags on, it just feels like RNG is going to have more solutions. They're, they're going to be able to split push really nice with the Terrorblade. They're going to be able to uh, force objectives really fast with that Metamorphosis and with the Diabolic Edict coming out. Inside of Entity, it, it feels like they're the ones that just Game needs to find his timing now. They would smoke up once more. Ooh, this could be dangerous though. Ghost has got a double damage rune active right now. This could be the uh, the worst timing possible here for Entity, but they're still maybe going to try and force this fight. They don't know about this TB's DD. Entity smoked up in the mid lane, but not moving too far forward yet. Just going to get a few D wards out while they can. And while Roshan does now respawn up, so it's a big objective for both these sides. Kind of maintain control around the Roshan pit now is the side of Entity. RNG will do the exact same thing in that Radiant Triangle. It's been very annoying against Toby's Primal Companion as well. Like, you've always got so many ways of scouting out the side of RNG. Very hard to be able to actually try and move into that Roshan pit. But RNG, they are going to smoke up themselves now as five. Where are they headed though? With the mid lane they go. Entity just kind of sitting back on that high ground of the die jungle. We'll counter smoke now. The five on five situation between these two teams. They need to answer bot somehow, but with a smoke commitment, they can't clear out that lane. Somnus is going to have to show up. That's going to that's give them a numbers advantage to Entity if they do fully commit for that movement out. It's a very smart play from Entity, just trying to force the, the hand of RNG. They certainly are doing so. I think it's a 4v5 right now, I suppose. Chalice can always try to, to use the ulti there to try and bring him back. RNG patiently waiting and so are Entity. Trying to rush into this fight. Again, it is a best of one. Loser of this match has to go home today. A lot on the line here between these two. So we just make very, very patient. 11 to 11, very slight at worth lead. This next team fight could decide that pretty much the outcome of the game, like the second Roshan, just so important. Yeah. Just, just showing respect to each other, knowing how close this map state is, really. It's a 2k lead for Entity, 11 to 11 on the board. Either side can really just take a big fight and suddenly have a huge swing their way. Now, for Entity's part, they do have that full BKB on Pure. He's still a 9 second charge. He's not going to have to worry about Somnus. He's got the armor to deal with. Uh, ghost here as well, so he's not going to get bursted down up front if they manage to find that angle. And, of course, you've got the Blink and the Force Staff up in Katalma, so it's much easier for them to put someone away, drag them away from RNG, which is where we've seen them weakest. Right? When they're split apart, when you're not close enough to your Underlord to stay alive, it just feels really awkward for Somnus to hold his ground there. It certainly does. Entity now in that Dying Triangle. Taking their time, understanding RNG and not moving the way into that Roshan pit. We'll just keep the farm up, going for that Nullify now on Pure. Um, butterfly now available on our TB. Ghost again, just been farming like a madman. Does have his Butterfly up. Very effective against all the units you have to try and survive against. Just that added evasion will be very effective with Ghost here on the TB. All about keeping this man alive throughout the team fights. Yeah, he, he's uh, tough not to crack. Doesn't even have his own uh, protective item yet. The BKB also coming out late for him. Just gonna play this patience game. Like, they, they understand so much is on the line here. It's a best of one. Your game is really even. You know both teams have really good times at this point, but you want to wait for more. And just kind of leads to a steadier game state. You, you play in the triangle, they play in the dire jungle. You can maybe scout around, but you don't want to risk it. Yeah. Very frustrating, like that bot lane's constantly being forced out here by the units of Entity. We saw it earlier. You do have to have Somnus just rotate constantly to try and make sure that is defended and pushed back out. Entity though, they were unable to force the Roshan fight that time around, but perhaps this time. They're trying to make it happen. Problem is the, the wave has already been pushed out here by Somnus, so he can easily rejoin his team and be prepared for that next team fight. So they are going to find a nice arcane rune here, and Pure will guard it with his own body. If you want to give that over to him, it does seem like Pure does take that arcane for himself. Radiant this bot lane just always being pushed in, just never being left alone. You've got to make a decision as RNG, like, do you want to force a fight? Do you want to keep defending that bot lane? Feels like no matter what you choose, you kind of lose here, but RNG, they are going to five man smoke up. Around the Roshan pit they go, they won't try to force the Roshan quite yet. 
Just trying to make their way through that dire jungle. Goes to a front line for the team. Chalice right behind him. I just see Toby here on the Brew Master and Karkar's in. He's popped the Echo Slam immediately. Just no hesitation. But the four star away is going to allow him a way out. There's now the Ice Blast. It'll land on a couple. Chalice, he'll be okay to walk. And it seems like Entity are not interested in trying to force this fight. They're just happy everyone survives. That'll be enough for them. They're still getting that bot lane shoved in still. A lot of creeps out. RNG, if they miss an opening, they pop Metamorphosis. There's now pressure here on RNG. Do you want to fully commit for the Roche? Can you fully commit for the Roche with a bot lane shoved in as deep as it is? It's a risky take, but they have no choice. They met us now and they need to go for it. Yeah, they've got to try. Ghost is in. Roshan being chipped away at. Fishman, he's around the corner. Storm Storm are able to scout out with the Familiars. It's a very hard Roshan for RNG to try and take. It's very forced, like you mentioned, and they are eventually going to have to back their way up. It's just not the Roshan you really want here. So many ways of getting that vision in the pit here for Entity. Now even a nullifier out on Pure. It's going to make life even more challenging for the side of RNG. Luckily for them, at the very least, the bot lane is not being forced in any longer. So they don't have to worry about that for now. But what they do have to worry about is this four-man smoke up from the side of Entity. They do wrap around that mid-river area, trying to make their way over to that Radiant Triangle. Ghost is going to show himself. Fisher is committed, just in the familiar. He's trying to burst them down, but Ghost, he does get caught out. Ice Blast and a big avalanche is out. Katomi setting up perfect. Chalice is in big trouble here on the Underlord. He might just drop and does. Meanwhile, Alex Nova getting chased down, but will be left alone. So instead, they'll go after Kaka on the Earthshaker. That'll be another as Ghost now. It's completely surrounded. How does he survive this one? It doesn't seem like he can, though. Chalice does try to move him, but it's not in time. They are falling like flies here, the side of RNG. As Entity, they will just keep moving forward. Somnus still trying to fight. Does go man up against Pure. In fact, that's a lot of damage from Somnus. He's got one down and another. He's found Pure on the Lycan. Somehow RNG still managed to find a way to fight back, and it's off the back of Somnus. Yeah, they did have to buy back on multiple heroes for that. Almost the entire team have to throw back up in that fight. It, it's going to cost them. They at least have a Roshan to take, so there's some security coming in here. Uh, I think your entity, you're still very happy. You force out a lot of spells. You force out a lot of good movement there. You manage to cut off Ghost, isolate him from the rest of his team, and just play around that. You toss him up in the air with a Brewmaster. You keep him so far away that he just doesn't have anyone to back him up. And you make it Look at this. extra awkward for RNG. So RNG is considered just trap him in that ramp. Couldn't do much. Perfect initiation by Kata I mean, like you mentioned, if it wasn't for the four buybacks to come out from RNG, they just would have had no chance in hell of even turning that. And, well, quite frankly, yeah, you got the, you got the Roshan at the end. Definitely great news for RNG, but heavy, heavy costs coming out for their side. Naomi, just so much impact on that support tiny. Or at least RNG in the meantime, do manage to take the top tier two tower. It's the ages that they do have up now something for their trouble but i imagine with the buybacks down chances are you are not going to be able to try and force high ground you're gonna to have to play it cautiously just hold back build back up maybe try to finish up that bkb here on ghost very close to just having the entire gold for them and once you've got that protection on the terror blade that's where you can start to get a little bit riskier still a rather even game the odds are showing a slight favoring there for side of entity just a small margin coming out so it's still holding even despite all the back and forth. Although RNG are finding the game a little bit tougher. Without that security of any buybacks, Entity has a lot more room for error here. Absolutely. Entity still grouped up. Unit. RNG. It's the same here in this mid lane as they do see the Overlord creep. They'll try to move in and take that one out. He's fine for now. Meanwhile, on the backside, looks like they have found X Nova on that Lich. The Crimson Guard, though, he is going to remain safe. Familiars just do not have the damage through that Crimson Guard. It's Ghost. Let's take care of the Familiars now as well. Storm Storm, he'll go ahead and respawn them right back up. It's such a close game between these two teams, just neither side willing to give an advantage over. They do take the outpost here, Entity. They want to try and control the bottom side of the map and maybe just keep working on towards that bottom high ground. Been doing a fantastic job with just the units being thrown onto those creep waves over and over again. 
and just waste the time of the ages here for Ghost. Just don't allow them the opening to actually find a successful team fight in RNGs in. Just prevent them from trying to reach that high ground here from RNG. Like, don't make them, don't give them any confidence to try to take that risk with the Aegis right now. Keep playing on your side of the map quite, on their side of the map quite nicely here. And just kind of keep them locked in. Like, it, once this Aegis expires, Ghost is going to be feeling pretty awkward. He still needs to farm up for that buyback. He, only, he has to wait two extra minutes after the Aegis expires for buyback. So it's a lot of room for Entity to actually just do what they want. And they are doing quite nicely here as well. RNG for their part. I mean, they've got protection up. They've got the full BKB for Ghost. They've got the blink up for Somnus along with a shard. So the split earth spam can kick in. They can complicate that high ground push and really make it tough in the middle of these team fights for Entity to kind of try to reposition themselves. But it does feel like the one thing is that the impact of Chalice is kind of falling off a bit. I mean, he can still play around really big with Fiend's Gate. The after 3 R is still sort of nice, and the Crimson Guard's nice as well, but you're not getting an easier way to do these fights now, especially if you just, if you absolutely whip the Pit of Malice, then it doesn't feel like you're getting much out from the Underlord, at least in these big 5v5s. Here we go again. Four men smoke up RNG. They are going to try and make their way through that dire jungle. The triangles, they do find one for Katomi. A very quick blink away. Maybe just fine as Ghost. It's pretty far forward. So his team right behind him, but will be tornadoed up here. With the brueling of Toby. Ghost just unable to yes. find a fight once again. There's only 58 seconds left on that Aegis that he does hold. Well, see, Storm, Storm are down at the bottom side, but they just can't make the jump in onto the Visage. So you might find a bottom tier one tower, but this Aegis, it really just doesn't seem to have really paid off for the side of RNG. It's bought you time in the game, but that's about all it's done. I think that's really the purpose of it. Just stall out, you, you bought back in mass in that last fight, you needed security. So you just get that, you play it slow, you farm back buybacks, you wait out that timer, and you just find whatever objectives you can take. Starting to pierce into that tier two bot, not gonna really fully commit. Sides of, side of entities now fully smoked off. They find a good angle here. There's still some more time until those buybacks back up. They're wrapping through that dire triangle. Nobody from RNG are around there anymore. They just leave the area. Not willing to risk anything. 13 to 15 now. 4k advantage. 40 minutes in. Teams in a best of one series. Playing it very, very safely. Not wanting to get eliminated this early in TI 11. Chalice is going to get jumped though. A nice avalanche toss back. But Chalice does have the BKB up. We'll just TP away immediately. Missing around though, Ghost now. Spotted by Karka, and they do actually land, land a nice tornado out onto the Earthshaker. Karka, he will be able to force stuff away, but the chase is on. Kataomi's there with the Avalanche. It's not going to be enough though, he's still fine. Seems to be desperately trying to find something for their trouble. Ex Nova, he's being chased down by these units of Pure, but even he's just fine. The Crimson Guard of Chalice, he's going to be able to back his way out, survive another day. Just a little bit poking and prodding, a bit of a deep chase out from Entity that doesn't find as much. Chalice did have to pop the Fiend's Gate to try to give them an angle out, but a little bit far out from Akka and from Ghost. Doesn't quite matter. Everyone stays alive in the end. And that does mean there's more time to for the side of RNG. This really favors RNG, actually, because, again, they're waiting for these buybacks to go back up. They're farming up, trying to get themselves back into the game and equalize the game a bit more. Whereas Entity... They need to find these kills now. It feels like if you're gonna have that window onto the high ground, you find one core kill here for a full minute with no buyback, that's enough time to melt those objectives. Looks like RNG, they're gonna occupy that dire jungle. Take the outpost back, maybe set up the next Roshan. It's be very well aware that Roshan's still a very far way away. We'll risk it, just letting that go for now. They have smoked up though, they might want to just try and fight. Again, they've been looking to try and fight the side of RNG for quite a long time. She's doing a good job of trying to avoid them all together, but Storm Stormer gonna move in. Has the, the vision of the Camellias as well as the Wolves coming out from Pure. They're gonna find Ghost on the TB and they will slowly start to move in. Ghost kind of surrounded here, does get tornadoed up. Pure, he'll pop the Wolf Orb. Who are they gonna target down first? On the top side, they found X Nova. they found Kaka. Both supports in trouble. X Nova already got it, now Kaka just drops to the damage of Pure. It's just so much damage as Somnus needs to back out. The BKB is wearing off, he does get nullified. Ghost, he's gonna try and mad fight through this, but can he really do it? It seems like he'll try. Toby will back out, they will lose Fishman, however. 
over. That's the AA down. That's at least one down for the side of RNG, but Entity, they do fire back. In fact, RNG, they will not stick around. Somnus, he's going to be just fine. Pure, can't get the damage off. So it's really just a two for one trade. Buyback forced out by Fishman. Who do you call that a win for here, John? I think you're a bit happier if you're RNG. It's not the biggest kill in the world. You do lose your two supports, but you managed to survive through while you know you were still waiting for a couple of those buybacks. Buybacks are back up for Kaka and X Nova, and you don't have Metamorphosis to play around, so that is still another opening for Entity to gun for. But your final splits down for a little bit longer. You're gonna have to just reset. You force the buyback out from Fishman here on this. Next up, Stormstormer just kind of going in on his own. He is around the corner, and so is Gataomi, but here comes Ghost and Chalice. They're going to try and make something happen. Toby, he'll show off the Brewmaster. Ghost, still willing to just fight back. Does take down the Brewing. They will focus down the Familiars and the, just the units in general. As much gold as you can out of this. Just doesn't feel like you ever really see a big 5v5 team fight between these two teams. Just all about these units being thrown out. It's just skirmishes. Poking, prodding, checking to see if anyone's going to overcommit and punish him. You're not looking to make any of those mistakes yourself. Too much on the line for you to take that risk. So you just send out the units, send out the illusions, and let them do the work for you. Side of RNG, they are getting that build up on Ghost. He's going for the full Silver Edge now. So more with damage, a source of break to kind of help them out and bursting someone down. Definitely going to help the cause there. A Lincoln's coming out from Somnus to help defend himself, especially from Nullfires. It's going to be really nice to have as well. It's a little bit more for that to be up, though. Oh, boy, they've got Chalice. That's a big one, but he does BKB up. In fact, now the Pit of Malice turning right back around Toby. He's a big target. He'll be able to force stuff away, though, and does get the Primal Split off. Is now Ghost. He'll be targeted here with the toss back of Katomi, but Ghost is still fine. He will get four stuff out of there. Meanwhile, it's over being chased down by the units of Pure. In the backside, though, they've got an Echo Slam. They've got the Sunder. Pure being gazed up. Can they get some revenge here? They cannot. He is still just fine. Chalice is the one to go down with the Underlord, but Ghost still trying to man up, still trying to fight against Toby. Toby will force stuff away. Where's the team fight? Entity, it seems like they're out once again. They'll find a couple, they'll get the buyback out from Chalice, and that's going to be enough for him. Uh, that's a big win for Entity. They force out the Metamorphosis. I, the flank coming out from Pure is just huge. He runs in on the side. No one can really handle him. Still had the BKB to come on as well. And he just makes short work of some of these softer targets. Yeah, you don't find the biggest kills, but just wasting Metamorphosis, wasting another BKB charge round, it's more than worthwhile for Entity. Certainly is. It's all about the buybacks here in this game. Roshan is now officially back up. Scary times once again for both sides. More so for RNG, though, as Entity just, again, have so many ways of scouting out what's happening in the pit. It feels like they're never really worried about it's Roshan being just snuck behind their backs. So we'll get some D wards off. Get the courier of Kaka on the high ground. That Roshan just feels so important in a game like this, just so tight right now. And you do have that axe blessing as available as well on this next Roshan. So RNG, five band smoke up. With mid river they go into the mid lane. Entity, they are hanging around that dire jungle. There's a double damage, naturally, on the bottom side of the map right now, John, and it does seem like RNG are going to find it. Right before Roshan. Ghost will take it for himself. This could be the opening they're looking for. Roshan, not going to be started yet, but Entity slowly making their way over to the pit. You all, I just get to work, and he will. Roshan now under siege, RNG, they're the ones that need to make the first move. Balls in their court. How do they initiate this one? Kataomi already in the outskirts of the Roshan pit, not allowing anyone to sneak in. And now X Nova, he does get caught out, but barely does not drop. He does survive for another day's the Ice Blast. He's going to fly through X Nova. He is going to force stuff and barely avoid it for now. The Roshan still being taken by the side of Entity. Seems, seems like they had no chance to try and initiate that team fight. Yeah, they, they just couldn't find the angle in. They get the full. The full salvo of items from Roche, Aegis up, Cheese up, Axe Blessing being held on to by Pure here. Wondering who's he going to pass that on to. It doesn't look like he's going to be needing the Wolf Bite in this game. You could probably Never give know. it a shot. Wolf Bite on a Visage with Silent as a Grave sounds are like a really <laughs> big one. We've never seen that one. So I would have maybe liked to see that. It would be pretty funny, but it's, it's fairly open. And it does look like he has passed it on. 
onto Katoni. So you've got the three volley on hand, which is always nice. Because suddenly you just pick up a Crystalis on his support tiny and he does a million damage. And he already has a Crystalis jump going into the Daedalus, so why the hell not? to see that free volley coming out here as a support tiny and kind of going to be very very happy with that so such a close game but now with the ages intact and entities end of things it's their game to lose it feels like they've got the 14k net worth lead we are 48 minutes into so the net worth may not matter so much but it just feels like every team fight they're ready they're able to disengage as soon as they want to they see one buyback they're out of there every single time it's going to be the story of the game here between these two teams just unwilling to give any openings to the other so yeah, they hang around that mid-river, but nobody willing to initiate a fight. Just play patiently, especially on NT. They're not in a rush anymore. They know they scale really nicely. RNG, it's, it's kind of all in on just having Ghost do something here. So they get the tips out, Metamorphosis pop along with the DDA. Not yeah. the best feeling in the world. Entity's got that opening. They know once that fades, it's gonna be on cooldown for quite a fair bit. Get a nice set of kills. No need to worry about the Terrorblade. Simplified process for the high ground. Absolutely. You say simplified process, John, but there's no simple no. anything about this game. It just sounds like everything's complicated. <laughs> Always is. Absolutely. Somnus takes care of that bot lane once again. RNG still patiently waiting for this high ground defense to come. Entity still just split pushing the side lanes. You know, John, I'd hate to say it, but is, is this. Do I, do I jinx it with the T? Do I say it? The T fight? I mean, it could go on for 10 more minutes if RNG hold on. Right. One big team fight could end it. All right, Chalice. Fish is there. Ice Blast will follow through. There's your tree volley, but it does get juked down, and Chalice will force staff away. Yeah, I mean, it could last 10 more minutes. It's just 10 more minutes away. So, well, you maybe. Said me, John. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying number, just implying 10 minutes is needed for that number to come up. Right. Maybe. RNG are doing a good job of holding, though. Like, they are 16k behind. It's not the biggest deficit at this point. It is still a good amount of items coming out to the rest of the course. If you look at the farm distribution, the one issue for RNG is that you're not scaling on challenge. Hold on. Sneaking up from the tree line, RNG successfully back off. But every way you look, Entity's got the advantage. High ground on one side, tree line on the other. So gonna hang around that mid tier two tower. Ghost cannot afford to die here on the TB. Though to be fair, he does have buyback, but you'd rather not have to commit it, especially when you're so close to your own base. Radiant structure. Tier two top tower just gonna slowly be focused down. The force forced out, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna do too much in the end. Little Fisher gonna land onto Toby. The problem is, it just feels like you, you can't really make the jump in. Like there's all these units in front of him. So much counter counter initiation here from Entity. They're just always ready to go. They've got that high ground advantage as well. RNG being very very patient with this game. Now 15 minutes in, just not trying to force anything. They naturally want that high ground advantage themselves. So you do see Somnus eat two tombs for himself now. Very close to that level 25 bar. Yeah, he gets it as well with the last home there. So, does have the Lightning Storm bouncing on you two units, or bouncing twice on units, which is really nice in stalling out this game further, right? Yeah. You can just hold forever, and maybe they are going to try to hit those next nine minutes here. The game is rather even. The side of Entity Dying would feel a lot better into that point of the game, though. They control the majority of the map. They can just clear out those cancels. Gotta be a bit careful. RNG. And they can stall well. It's a Leshrac. It's an Underlord. Your wave clear is really good. So even if you start to lose some tier twos, high ground hold is still there. And I think Entity don't mind playing that game. Absolutely not. They seem to be enjoying themselves here. I'm sure, Storm Stormer. Pushing with the familiars. Sees the Firestorm. Immediately just walks them out once again. Unwilling to feed any free gold away to the side of RNG. Entity. Cool. Expect their way out. No rush for them. Age is about to expire in five seconds. They're not risking anything. More farm to be had on pure. And the Bastion now coming out on the Lycan. This little way of canceling TPs off and actually locking people down throughout these fights. Again, it, it just feels like they're in full map control here. There's just no need to rush this game. Yeah, just, just kind of hold back. Keep waiting. I mean, there are a couple of items I think RNG could try for. The overwhelming blink is coming out from Samus. You do have the full ags up on Ghost, which is great to see. He does need something to kind of help him out when that metamorphosis is down he's gonna have an option at least with a terror wave coming through 
Well, he will have some contributions for the team, and yeah. you're not beholden to this long cooldown as much as you used to. However, you do have a refresh up on Toby, so you, you still have the double primal splits coming out, which is also really annoying, especially in the late game. Like, all you need to do is really just fly Ghost up for the entire team fight. And that's it. Your Terra Blade's gonna be isolated at the end, and it's a really easy target to handle. It certainly is. Just look at his now. Tommy right nearby. Same fight, yep, yeah, but does have his own smoke broken. Back off immediately. Ghost is probably in this around the corner. It's being scored up here. Him slowly but surely getting stronger as the smoke is gonna be there once again from Entity. High ground being held in this radiant triangle there from RNG, and they're gonna counter smoke. This could be the big team fight we've been waiting for as Entity. They've got so many ways of scouting out. Not so much through this smoke, but now that the smoke is broken on a couple, who have they found? It's gonna be Storm Stormer. The pit of Mars to lock him down. The fish is there to follow up, and in comes Kataomi and X Nova. He just gets deleted by the support tiny as he keeps moving forward. Ghost, who do we go for? Storm Stormer, he's the target. They finally find the visitor. Maybe oh. not Storm Stormer. He's still running, but X Nova, he's trying to get the job done himself, and eventually Ghost will find it. Two down. Entity. They've lost a couple here, and it seems like RNG have finally cracked an opening open for themselves as Kaka, he even oh, finds hard. another. He's gonna find Toby, but there is gonna be the refresh. To the Primal Split once again. Toby's still blocked off by the Fisher, and now Ghost can get right to work, but they want that Earth Panda. They need it. The slope from the Ice Scotty. Maybe they've got it. Oh, Toby, Toby trying to run, but is not gonna make it out. No playback on him. No buyback on Toby. And suddenly the game is swinging back the other way. Uh, it, it's opened up. Entity, they got some good scouting around there with Storm Storm, but they didn't manage to follow up. He managed to get a good jump in, doesn't live true. And you still have a lot of damage on Ghost, even though it doesn't feel like when feel like it when he's whacking a visage away. The high ground still clears up. Yeah, Ghost racks the game to go the way of RNG, and I can't really believe I'm saying that, John, but they made a great comeback here in this, in this game. I'm gonna say game one again, John, but it is still a best of one. <laughs> Just reminding myself, Spisha does come out. Chalice, he finds it back his way out, and again, it's still a very slow game. Like, you you are still behind as RNG. Sure, you're one rack's up now, but you could lose one team fight, and the game could just snowball back the other way. Though I say that, Pure does get caught oh. out. He's the biggest target. The gaze is going to lock him down, drag him out, but Kataomi, he's got the die back on the lift. So, Exnova, he's down for 80 seconds. In goes Pure with the wolf form, but he needs to run away his Kaka, looking for the chase, waiting for the BKB, but now the Fisher oh. is going to lock him down. Somnus should have the damage and will eventually get it out. Pure's down for 100, but he does have buyback. He can come back in. He's not going to have a wolf form. And Kaka again with a great blocks in this game, ensuring they find that major kill. And they, they might not be able to take the risk onto the high ground. It's not the comfiest spot. Do you, you feel like a bit of a reset? You're waiting for Metamorphosis to come back up. But Roshan's up in a few seconds. So you've got this big objective to play for, and Entity even with that buyback commitment, can, it can feel a little bit risky going into that pit. Roshan's got everything on hand again. Absolutely. Everything now available on this Roshan. RNG, they'll get to work. Entity, they've got no way to answer to this. I mean, this is the first Roshan. It feels like that RNG could just kind of walk into the pit and finally get it done. And here we go. Everything available. Let's see what they can get done with it. Entity, they're the ones now that need to find a way to slow down this game. Kaka, looks like he's got the axe blessing on him soft though. Has he handed it? He has. Chalice will take it from soft now. That's really disruptive with the Fiend's Gate, with, with a pit of malice on both sides, and the slow as well. Like, combining that with the control coming out from Kaka, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to lock in these heroes like the like and like the Visage when he does have the Grave Chill, oh, sorry, the Grave Chill on, yeah. So, you've got a lot of control coming in to counteract all that movement. There is still good wave clear coming out from Kataomi. He just gets a tree volley off. Your, your wave does die. It's going into the high ground. It's still a process here for RNG. But they even get a refresh up on Ghost. He, he's ready. Whew. Secondary life. Doesn't matter if you waste the Metamorphosis or Terror Wave or the BKB. You're always going to be able to have any of that on hand for the next. Although it is costly in the mana. Does have the stats to back that up. Absolutely. This game is still so much tighter now. Break advantage, just doesn't matter. One and a half minutes away from that time. 
<laughs> Dire triangle occupied by N3, but they are eventually going to back their way out. RNG was slowly making their way over. And down towards the bottom side, the bottom lane is the lane with the final outer tower here for RNG. They want that bottom tier 2 gone. They might approach high ground with that Aegis up. So plenty of time available, and like you just pointed out, John, the refresh orb going to be very impactful here on Ghost. Especially with that terror wave, you, you can't underestimate that fear. RNG, got to find the bottom tier too. Question is, do they want the high ground? I mean, they, they could just go. Now, there's not too much of a risk left. Buybacks are available once more. The issue is, with Katawumi around, as long as he gets the Protoss trees out, your creep wave just melts. It is tougher, although the next creep wave is coming in. They're just poking the prodding again, sending in the illusions to get that 3D work done. They, is, they say pigs don't fly, John, but the ghost, we just saw him flying there for a moment in that hex ball. He's still going to keep moving in. Creep wave is there now. And he has slowed this one down. They are going to fortify up. More cyclones out onto the TP as ghost. Very patient, still has that metamorphs, the pop and still has the refresh available. Slowly chipping away with the illusions, but they are being dispelled here by the Storm Panda. Eventually, I think RNG might just have to let this one go and go for a reset. You've still got two minutes, 20 seconds on this Aegis timing. I think you can afford to reset and maybe come back another time. Yeah, no rush. You've got all the tools under your belt here. For the side of RNG, the entity is just kind of pushed back. Dagon does fly on, so a little bit more burst damage on hand. Let's see if it's going to be enough to make a big difference here. Love me, Dagon, though. Absolutely. Always fun. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Another double damage room on that top side, Jonathan. Like, another double damage available for RNG. I mean, it feels like they're just getting blessed with double damage after double damage here. And they're certainly going to be happy to accept this one. Ghost will take it himself. Well, now you've really got no choice. You've got to try and go high ground again. Yeah, you've got Metamorphosis ready, Terror Wave not too far off. So, yeah, no risk here at all. Uh, the one thing is, again, eh, Wave Clear is still pretty good for Entity. It does feel like you want to catch one of them off guard. Get that pick off once more, as we've seen RNG sort of find the angle for. They haven't really been using the uh, Fiend's Gate for any aggressive movement out. More defensive, but they'll get to it. Air away about Ghost, just gonna get right to work. The bot tier 3 tower already gone. Bottom racks, not gonna last long either. Tadahomi is gonna jump in though. Avalanche tosses out. Ghost is in big trouble. He got Sans and he will go down the first time. But he's got the Aegis. He's got the refresh. He's still got the oh, initial better, but the Sans is there with a the nullifier. Oh my god. Oh, Ghost is gone. And the rest of RNG. They need a way out of this team fight. Chalice just leaves, but he's left by himself. Somnus needs to TP on the tree line. With the BKB, is going to be all right. But they've got goes down. He does have buyback available. And Jonathan, we've jinxed nothing. It's 60 minutes in. We've got tier five <laughs> items. Yeah, it's coming out. And it, I think the one thing that changed was really who had control of the map. Ten minutes ago, Entity had control. And for a while, go. RNG had it. Now, Entity has it back again. They find the Arcanist armor. I mean, pretty damn useful up against something like Leshrac on hand. It does give the Giants ring. We, we know that's Giants. what everyone wants to see. Yeah, I, I want to see a gigantic flying visage around. See in that last fight, great toss back from Katawumi. Catches out that Terrorblade and the instant hex. He couldn't refresh the BKB. All the control in the world and no one can follow up from RNG's end. Absolutely not. Mirror Shield now coming out. X Machina as well and the Sea Stone. Just so many items being dropped. Just taking those items as soon as they possibly can and backing their way back towards their base. I mean, they don't really want to have to try and force the buyback out from Ghost. Radiance and try and avoid it and just hold down. out for now. Ex Machina was taken by Somnus and Mirror Shield actually taken by our TB, though he is still dead. Maybe just prepping for that buyback. Meanwhile, Pirate Hat is going to be sitting there on pure, so no attack speed on his side of things here on the Lycan. Everything else gone. You've got the Arcana Sama here on the Visage. Makes, the, makes him an even harder target to try and burst down than the rest of his teammates. Stone, of course, naturally on the Pulse 5 Fishman. He has to suffer. He gets the boring item. Yeah. It is what it is. It's the destiny of the support. You don't get the funnest item in the world. No. But it is a useful item. Seer Stone is pretty nice. Revealing an area. And be nice to cut off any movement RNG you might want to bring out there. And side of RNG for their part, I mean, 
it's not the end of the world uh, losing that push. They still have the advantage. Uh, you've always got to send some units, send some heroes up top to control that. Smoke out here, though, could find themselves in an interesting spot. Oh boy, here we go. RNG, they didn't time for something. They found Toby. The root is there. They should have follow up. You don't have the burst damage though with the Aeon disc. He's going to be just fine to reinitiate this team fight with his own primal split. But they are trying to back off a cut to Omi. Look at the damage output oh, from geez. the tiny with the tree volley. He does at least find Karka, but the buyback is there. Ghost now is trying to force the fight once again, but does need to back out. It just doesn't seem like the one. The BKB does wear off, and now Entity, they keep moving forward. They want the Terror Blade. They've got it locked down. With the Abyssal Blade, Ghost is in big trouble. He's going to try and find a way to buy back. He'll go for the Terror Wave, but it does nothing through the BKB. This is not the team fight. RNG needs to get back to the high ground and will do so. Did you see the damage out from Kata Omi, John? This is a support tiny with an Apex. Don't underestimate the amount of damage this man has. Apex, Monkey King Bar, BKB, Daedalus. Very standard support tiny items at this the point. Fine game, Rapier. Do that as well. Yeah, of course. You want to end this game, just get that divine up, whack away on those buildings, and the game's gonna be over pretty fast if you're not careful. RNG for their part. I and mean, that was such a costly fight. Refresh pop from our terrible ghost, and he has that refresh orb in the backpack. Yeah. So it's also just not gonna refresh anything for the next long, long time. We'll have to bring that active. And Entity again, they find themselves in this position where they've got so much more to play with. Refresh up on Storm Stormer as well, flying out. Roshan gonna see that timer in about 15 as well. Let's get a Stygian and Desolated now, done with this, this support tiny, so things are even scary ah. for the, uh, the side of RNG. Balanced. Very balanced, Jonathan, very balanced indeed. What about the T5 <laughs> items for RNG? Like, what are they? We've got one more to go. Can we get a giant ring in this game? Like, we haven't gotten one yet from either side. <sighs> I don't know if you really want it on RNG anywhere. Like, trying to ring on Ghost is gonna be nice. The added strength is good. It, it feels like you might want something else. Uh, and, oh, it's gonna keep the mirror shield. I know. Like, Giant's Ring on Chalice would be funny. I just don't know if it really does anything. Arcane Storm just kind of does the same thing for your team. Yeah. And they go again, mid lane, they're gonna find some familiars and some units, they're pure. He's gonna pop the wolf form, they have found him out, he'll go for the BKB, right back in onto Somnus, just chomping him down, it's a fair bit of damage, but not quite enough, Somnus, he'll turn around, looking for the fight, but pure is out of there. They know where RNG are, Entity, we don't want to fight without the wolf form, but they might just think about it. Mid lane, Chalice, will get hexed up here by Stormstormer, it's a fair bit of damage with that blood form. He's still going for it with the Familiars, but with that Crimson Guard, he's taking a fair bit of it as Chalice, still in trouble, he's gonna walk his way out. Meanwhile, Karaomi looking for a way back into the team fight of Stormstormer. Now the one in trouble, Somnus moving back in with the Bloodstone Charges, trying to get some damage down Chalice. In the meantime, in the mid lane, just tanking all the units out here from Entity. They're just dealing with Broodling. Babe. They dance around really nicely. Katomi gets a really good angle to just get two tree volleys off. No one dies in the end. So a lot expended from both sides. It does feel like you risk it a lot more on RNG's part. Having to pop the BKB on Ghost to just try and find something in the middle. And Entity, they don't find anything for their trouble either. So we're, we're stuck in a bit of a deadlock here, Mike. Yeah. Probably the longest game of the day already. 65 minutes in, 66 oh. minutes in for day one. Ooh. And there goes X Nova. He's not going to last long against a support tiny, but in comes Ghost, trying to punish as he cannot. In fact, now Ghost, he's the one turned off. That's a bad position. Somnus, he shot them oh. though with a massive split off the net. Chalice, he's there with the pit of malice as well. Trying to burst them down. The familiar's the visage. He's in big trouble. Karkas out with the echo slam. Maybe they've got it up and they do. Stormstorm has got but Somnus. He will drop as well. On to Toby. The Aeon Disc is going to prop into the primal split. They go. X Nova, he pulls back into the team fight he'll back his way out at least for now and he's gonna be just fine it's another reset fight yeah it's just back to the start buybacks expended by both sides you find a bit of a bigger kill on the side of entity managing to take out somnus he did get a little bit more in exchange oh. it's all it's back to this next roshan Mike. it's best of one dota back up this is best of one dota no one wants to leave ti Sorry. So everything's online, you're, you're playing as hard as you can to find that clean win condition. You don't want the risk. Roshan, we saw them dance around this objective for a long time as well last time. Like, oh boy. And be tough to really fully commit. 
I wonder what, if you get the gold as Katomi, do you just bind a divine straight up? Like, I know, we're, we're 65, 67 minutes into a game now. Do you just buy it? No, I can't say yes to that. I mean, uh, having, uh, if you have buyback gold, sure. Because the toss back in high ground defense is huge. But if you just go in, risk it all in on that divine, you probably have enough damage with a tree volley, to be fair. Like, that could just literally end the game. But if you do die, you give away the rapier, you won't have buyback, you don't have that toss back for these fights, it does get a little awkward. So I'd say, at least save for the buyback for a A full snipe device now coming up from RNG. They've got one on Chalice, they've got one on Somnus. That could make all the difference here for RNG. They can catch Entity off guard with those hexes up. They get the damage off in time before those BKBs do come out from these pools. And Roshan is the main objective. All items up, in they go. Toby will just do it himself with the uh, with the flame panda. It's a, it's a slow process, but he's getting there. TB Illusion will move in as well. Yeah, this this went on for about five minutes in the last rush, right? Just Illusion in, Primal Companion in, and then just keep going. So reset, reset, reset. What you're telling me is we need T6 items now. I, I, you know what, that would be pretty interesting. How crazy can Dota really get? Your 6 would be... Fantastic. When your games go 18 minutes and no one ever wants to win, yeah. maybe that ends the game. Still, you know, it's not quite enough for either side to feel comfy yet. 16k lead for Entity, 19 to 25. I mean, at this point, 17k lead just doesn't matter. Everyone's got items, everyone's got farm, except maybe class fives. And it's all about execution. It's all about if you can catch certain heroes out, if you can get your enemy in a bad position, punish them harder. No one wants to give that up. And if you're not looking to give away openings, you're just looking to hold your ground, keep farming, and just be patient. Very, very patient teams here, Mike. You've got to be, John. Now, this is the event you've been playing for for the whole year. I mean, if, there's time, if there's a time to be patient, it's right now. And there's the Divine Rapier. Oh, boy. It does come out on the Tiny. Support Tiny with the Divine Rapier. You love to see it. 69 and a half minutes in. You said, John, it was a risky maneuver. I say Giga Chat Madu. Uh, he, he, well, he doesn't have buyback, but Katarumi's positioning has been on point. They haven't been able to really kill him off, so yeah, three volley away. Yeah. As long as RNG doesn't catch him out, he is set for a really good time, because boy oh boy did he just not. Yeah, fun fact by the way, the damage is not reflecting on the, on the tiny damage right now, so whatever damage you see on that tiny, just <laughs> add 350. That is not accurate. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a bit too much damage. I'll, I'll do the math for you. It, it's basically what, like 900, 1,000 damage base on this tiny right now? Thank you, Mike. Yeah, that's that's a good amount of damage. And now we just need to see that action. And, the, and the moment they see that opportunity for Kataomi to just do his thing, that's where it gets wild. And again, it, goes, it just goes back to this draft, right? It goes back to what we were talking about with timings in this lineup. The scaling of entities kicking in because this tiny was a support. You know, and he's got the Divine Rapier now. You can't do the same thing with, say, a Lich. You know, it's it's not the same thing in terms of scaling. Even you. Again, Chalice can't really do as much now on the Underlord. It's a little annoying, but it's not it's not the most annoying thing in the world. So, I don't like your lack of faith in the uh, the carry Lich, John. <laughs> this is the SCATI. Oh. I'm sure we can make it happen. I have any server that makes it happen. <laughs> to be fair, I've seen, I've seen my own share of mid Liches. Top lane, Christine. Certainly is. Look at that damage from that tree body just bursting down 2.3k damage as now they make the jump in. Somnus in trouble and they toss him, they burst him down just so quickly. Pure, he has the damage. Stormstormer trying to back his way out, but now it's Ghost that's in trouble. Can they surround him? Pure, he's looking for more on the backside. He's found Karka on the Earthshaker. No four star boy this time through the nullify for Chalice. Trying to buy a bit of time, but Karka's gone. Pure going for more now. Somnus, keep in mind he has no buyback available for this fight. Where's Ghost? All by himself. Still trying. Does end up getting the tear wave off just as he could type to force them back. But he's going to find a target that could be aimed down. Toby will move in. Now with the plot on, he's copying way too much damage. But the Sunder is there in time. Ghost trying for the TP and is going to make it. Just barely. This game is not over yet, but it is a 4v5 situation. They are lose. They are missing their mid lash rack. And no buyback out in Somnus. It's still a big window for Entity. I mean, you, you had to expend so many resources on RNG. Refresh down from Ghost. He's going to have to wait a lot longer for that safety net. Now Roshan opens up for Entity. There's no contestion out from RNG. All the items once again going the way of Entity. 
I wonder who they give the axe to at this point. Because I would say just to hand it over to Pure. Yes, have the wolf bite. Wolf bite a visage with silent as the grave. Or no, you know, just wolf bite your tiny with tree fall. Yeah, it sounds wolf fun. Wolf bite your tiny. That's, yeah. That's about it. Here we go. Pretty much. Go on, Pure, do it. He's going to wait a little bit. This is going to be a real treat to watch. I mean, we saw this last grand final of, of TI-10. Course. We're going to see it all over again. Some things never change, John. Yeah, some things just stay the same. And Ah, RNG. I mean, this is this is a toughie for them. They, they, they still have their racks intact, too. That's the crazy part. Their high ground is still completely there. But they haven't been able to do anything else with that one lane racks they took. They've not been able to find more beyond that bot melee and entity just worked the map a lot better they're trying to get the second set of talents up for Thomas. he's eating all the books once more rushing into 29 for that 20 strength and that's gonna help a little bit in durability but we were, we're talking about tiny with divine rapier and daedalus I, I don't know if that helps by that much swift blink by the jonathan tiny's now got a swift blink up as well so cut only up and available Still grouped up here, Anthony. Daedalus being built up on pure, by the way. I mean, this is the point where they're just running out of slots to put items yeah. in. It's, it's kind of rough for them to try and decide what they really want this game. Resources, I, I believe the key word here, John. Resources. No slots. Oh. It's it's not something you can always just find more of. So yeah. I mean, we've we see we've seen that be a problem for Ghost, right? Like having to juggle in the refresh. What if you could like say 75 minutes in, they just give you two extra slots? That's that's really broken. That's absolutely broken. Yeah, but you're 75 minutes into the game, John. What else are you meant to do? That, that's fair. Everyone's gonna get the slots in that in this hypothetical scenario of yours. Yeah, I mean you've got backpacks. Why not have pockets? <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I guess it could work. That would really, I mean, that would just make late game Dota even more insane. Yeah, to be fair. Like, yeah. it's, it's already hard to understand whatever's going on here. Yeah, so I mean, he's a wolf right now, John. That's a very, very scary predicament if he does make the jump in with that swift link. Let's see how it works out for them. They're going to try and defend high ground here. RNG, in they go. Kataomi, oh. he's in, but the Aeon Disc is going to save X Nova. He'll be back out of there. That goes. He's the one to move in. They found Pure. Oh, my can Pure's in trouble, and he's gone. At least the first time. That's just the age of the tree falling. He's gonna fly in, but pure. Casually walk out as they do cyclone up the TB once again. Ghost can not get to work, but now they found at least Fishman on the AA. Ghost lost the BKB up, but he's gonna be just fine to take the AA down. And they hold on to the top racks. This is quite literally defense of the This is what defense of the ancients is, John. They are defending. Yeah, but we're not even at the ancient. We're still at the racks. Like they still hold on to the racks, and it's Entity who's at least a lane and a half behind. But they've got the 35k lead, and RNG just managed to execute in that tight area so well. Like you saw, Katahumi try to jump in on the flank, and the Aeon disc just managed to buy enough time. He doesn't want to stay around there. It's too risky for this tiny to take that frontline role instead of just playing with the tree ball. So even if you have that wolf fight, if you don't find that instant kill, he's out of there. And that just gave RNG the chance to jump in, punish pure, chain stun off. They've got so much control in in a choke point like that, that Somnus just really shines on that left track. It's that point where it starts to really stall the game well. You, you gotta give a shout out to our boy X-Nobra as well, John. He's still on the stage by himself <laughs> right now. It's 75 minutes in, the guy's just been stuck God. there the whole time. Yeah, well, with his four teddy bear teammates, of course, those teddy bears are playing mad, mad Dota right now. Yeah, an entity. It's it's it, it, it's so hard to say that they're behind. It, they're not in any metric, but as long as the high ground looks better for RNG, the game looks better for RNG. Oh, mid lane ghost. It's like a very aggressive jump in, but it's only onto the three point. Entity don't want to borrow this. They do back their way up. But keep in mind, you are basically one mid lane barracks away from having Megas up for RNG, but I don't really think it matters so much right now, considering we're almost 8 minutes into the game. RNG, gonna move their way in. There's your tree volley. It does do quite a bit of damage onto Ghost. He's lost half his HP pool. The Ice Blast also gonna land, but they are gonna be fine to back their way up. Buyback was forced out from Fishman. That's gonna be enough for the side of RNG. Just go back, reset, maybe... If this game keeps the pattern up, we're gonna be waiting for that next rush. Yeah. So, we'll see. I do feel like RNG's got so much more to play with. Like, th just having this Ags up as well on Somnus, yes. it forced this build-up of the Revenant's Brooch 
up on Pure because he needs a way to hit while Ghost Form is up on him. So he has to go for the Rouge. Very unorthodox, but very good counterplay for the Lash. We'll have to see if it does play a big part there. As it just feels like that Nihilism is also going to be a problem up front. 38k lead still up for Entity 20 to 27. And next Roche, still 2 minutes 40 when we see that timer come back up. Entity, they've got travels to and Katomi. And they've, they've really just got four cores. I mean, at, at this point, you know what? Yep. Get the Ags up on on Fishman. Just just go for it. But we're going into that point of go to where everyone's going to be a core. I don't care about the core AA. I want you to tell me how we can get a core lit. That, that's what I really want. How do, how do we trans, translate X Nova here into a, into a POS 1? Uh, just like, never mind. Toby. Could be in a danger. RNG trying to move in into that mid lane. There's two big targets. If they can make the jump, Somnus is there with the scythe device to get started. Hit of Malice goes trying to move in with a tree volley damage. You've got to be wary, but he has the Sunder. He'll reset. Back in onto the fist as they go. Storm Stormer is going to be able to back his way out. Now with the, without the BKB Ghost, he's going to be so careful. It's in the backside. Chalice is gone on the Underlord. Kaka, he'll go for a fish and try and hold them back, but they can't control this tiny. He's in that wolf form. In goes Pure as well the echo slam it literally does no damage that's, that's a big win for entity they managed to force the buyback out from challenge take the dieback out from kaka and you saw rng try to be the aggressor to say they just don't have enough to eat through just the brewmaster with his own save and even then we saw ghost focusing in on storm storm he doesn't have enough damage to eat through just how tick of visage is at this point so, Entity find the fight outside, but RNG can just look at these waves. Side lanes are shoved out top and bot, mid lane scrubbing in a bit, but your Leshrac's still alive, so you can just hold it back. And Entity isn't moving bodies for it. You're just holding your ground, farming up more, waiting for next Roshan. You just not want to take that risk with here. They took a big risk of RNG jumping in, they tried to get control, Ghost just nearly melts. Yeah. You cannot underestimate the, the damage from this free volley right now. That is, it's if you get the lucky crits, I think he's printing for over 2k each time. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a scary affair if he gets a few crits in a row, that's for sure. Still, no high ground attempt coming up from Entity quite yet. I mean, Taka does, uh, does now have buyback available on the Earthshaker 30 seconds away from respawning. Like you mentioned, it's all about the next Roshan. How many Roshans have we gone through now, John? I can't count. You can't count. I'm not capable of it. Or can they use your like hand on seventh, seventh? seventh or eighth or All right. like maybe my count's off and probably is off around that point rng I mean, their, their line is so good at just holding though and there's been no progress you know what if x nova manages to hit his level 25 <laughs> and goes for <laughs> to reach in these towers could just heal up we could be oh, here I all forgot. night I forgot that existed. Oh yeah, plus 50 HP region. Let's, let's see it happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, all the tomes have been going over at uh, Somnus for the most part. Now I think you'd really want them. It's, it's kind of weird to say, but really on X Nova. Yeah. Like, just additional HP regen on objectives at the least is nice. If not, going offensive for the Chain Frost bounces really clears out that army. Well, smoke out from RNG here, though. Here we go. In triangle they hold. That's a Omi. I mean, he has a divine raver. If you can find the kill, it's a pretty big one. X Nova, Aeon Disc. It's not the target. No, it's certainly not. Ice Blast will land. Kata Omi will get the wolf by now and be fine to back off the back. He wants to go back in. Double wolf strat here. They do move in. Somnus with the Shiva's Guard. In fact, they found Toby, but he has his own Aeon Disc, so he's gonna be just fine. Meanwhile, Pure, he'll get stunned up through the BKB. will retreat immediately. Didn't have enough time on that BKB left to keep going. Understands he can't really handle Ghost without it. Just back his way up. Speaking of Ghost, he's got a Divine Rapier locked in his backpack right now as well. <laughs> We're ready. Roche respawning. This is pretty good for Entity. They have the better position here to take Roche. Another full complement of items. It's time for Fisherman to have his own eggs. So you will see the chill and touch removed. Secondary life in. Is this enough to open up high ground for them? It surely should be. Are you, are you kidding? I mean, seventh Roshan, you're telling me now it's now it's gonna work? Yeah, it, it takes seven. Okay, it's all the way up to seven. You don't even know it is seven yet, John. I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. I we can't count. Confirmed. But I really can't count. I'm, I'm just not capable. Uh, now, but yeah, we were at the point where you do have the Ags and Fishman, so he can just kind of build up into whatever he wants. You've got another core, everyone scaling on Entity. Yeah. He could buy a Divine if he wants to. That would also be really fun. 
but I don't think he would do that. Uh, RNG for their part. We said uh, they, they, they still have this hole. They have the lanes all shoved out in a very favorable position. So Entity has to kind of take initiative here. They've got to shove out the lanes their way, get the commitment onto the high ground, and try to make it work out. I think the one issue with a high ground siege is positioning Kataomi for a good three volley is a little bit tougher in that choke point. So finding that angle for the burst from afar is a bit of a challenge here. It certainly is. 82 and a half minutes in. And Divine Rapier was combined here by Ghost. Now a refresh orb available on the Tiny as well. So you've got double tree bomb. Maybe that's the <laughs> More trees are the answer to this. It could be. It could be. Watch your and that, that might it's be enough. Now the issue is again, in some of these choke points towards the high ground, it's you will run out of trees. So I'm not sure if the refresh does everything you want it to. I, I think the bigger thing might be just multiple boss packs. Right. That could be it. it. Opens up this game. Just instantly relocate multiple heroes back. Keep controlling Ghost. Keep controlling Somnus. And open up the high ground. Still. You drop the Pit of Malice, you drop the Split Earth, you drop the Firestorm, a push just doesn't happen. Now it is now some oh. fighter, who they got? It looks like Somnus on the left track has been caught out, but he'll be KB up, he'll survive. His Ghost will go for the Terror Wave, he's gonna be just fine. Hasn't popped the real Metamorphosis, still has Refresh anyway. I, I suppose if you enter these, surely you're just gonna keep chipping away. I mean, you've got the Aegis up, you've gotta keep going, and that they will. Still, again, now hit a mouse out, Sonics. Oh, here we go again, Ghost just brings him right into the center of all this, dealing with the units. Stormstorm is familiar, I'm just gonna nod through this. It's one of the rulings from Toby. He'll keep sending them in, trying to get the damage out. It's a slow chip away. The cool they got there on the bottom side, it looks like Stormstorm was caught out there for a moment by the Pit of Malice. He's gonna be just fine though, his entity still trying to move in onto the high ground. Just can't get it done though. Familiars are being fit back the way of RNG. And that's gonna be it. Entity there out once again. And they hold high ground. Pit of Malice, Split Earth, Firestorm. What push are you really looking to get out here? Yeah. And it does take some risk from Ghost. He has to come in, get the Terror Wave off, had to pop the refresh once more. So Entity are draining resources still, but they also drain their own. Like they don't have Familiars for a bit longer. They're gonna need to kind of finagle their way in somehow and they're just gonna have to go back and farm next Roshan four minutes 40 until we see that timer off yep. age is still up for a little bit longer here it's maybe time to chill out again yeah and for anyone in the crowd as well by the way if you do have work tomorrow I highly recommend you you end up falling in sick right now and this one's not ending we're going all the way I don't know where the end is, Sean. I don't know where all the way is, but we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going on a journey with RNG and Entity. They're taking us all the way to truly explore the concepts of Dota, to explore the concepts of sieging high ground. This, this is really just a great class to understand how to play Defense of the Ancients, how to hold that high ground. So you have a lot of AoE, toss out all those spells, and eventually, eventually, Mike, we're gonna get the point where X Nova has 25. Why is he stuck at 22? He has not moved at all. Someone's fine with the tombs, John. You know, these damn calls. They're like, oh, I'm level 27. Let me get level 28. You know, I, I need that extra talent. <laughs> uh, just, just get the healing, and then <laughs> just heal up everything. Never let the game end. That's what I want to say. Exactly what we want. Bot lane. Free point being pushed out again. Wolves are in now. Four wolves in fact. He'll wrap them around the pit lane instead. And this is what the game's all about now. How well can you micro these units? It's not even about heroes anymore. Just about sending something in, sending the bodies in to try and rip apart. They find the tier tree tower down bot, but he can't move in onto the rack. So you're still fairly all right here in RNG's end. I mean, with all due respect, John, I don't think the Raxes matter anymore. I don't think the Team Force matter anymore. I think the Ancient is literally the only thing in this game that matters at this stage. Yeah. Right now, for both sides, they are still well protected. Nothing's happening. Aegis does expire on Entity. So your backup plan on Storm Stormer is kind of gone. Time to wait for the next Roche, perhaps, here. And yeah, they just leave the Rax alone. Uh, can't really find a pickoff. That will force RNG to constantly look down bot, especially since uh, you do have the shard up on Pure. He's had it for a while.
Now, the bot lane is always just going to naturally shove in without the tower to protect. 68k lead for Entity 20 to 29. 69k lead now. Uh, really doesn't matter. John, I, I didn't think I'd be asking you this on the TI stage. I yes. really didn't. Have you had Barry in today? I've got to ask you one. No, 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 I haven't. I haven't been able to have my high tea, as they call it here. I always love myself a high tea, but it's been a while. I haven't been in Singapore in years. Right. Always good to be back. And we are well past high tea as well, Mike. We're, we're starting to approach supper. Well, I'm aware. That's why I asked you if you had no. Barry in the jungle. Not if you're having Barry in. I mean, it's TI. There's no time. For Only time for Dota. And RNG and Entity really maximizing that time here in Dota. Next Roche, minute 50, minute 40 away. Again, just lining up for that. Great pack up on Toby. A little bit more damage mitigation. It, it, it's getting really hard for RNG to pierce through. Like, they just don't have enough damage. Even with that Divine up and Ghost, it, it's not like Kato only, you know? It's, it's not like this big, tiny, with the crits, three volleys. Uh, it's just not the same. Gentlemen's agreement, everyone deletes their items, six divine rape is <laughs> what I think. <laughs> uh, no plane, storm stormer. Oh, in goes ghost, he does pop the terror away. Gets the familiars, that's about it. We'll just respawn the familiars once again. Just slowly chipping away the base of RNG. And I've said it a few times, but I don't think megas are gonna matter. Like you'll get megas up. Literally nobody cares on RNG or where Entity, they'll just keep defending. Yeah, you're, you're way too farmed up on everyone. Uh, it's just not going to really influence the game state except for having to check lanes alone. Jump in, Somnus, by himself, just trying to go for those units, does clear out the Familiars and the Ancient Black Dragon. So the units are gone, though Pure does pop the Wolf Bomb. In goes the Tree Volley, but it's off the mark. Kataomi not able to find the targets he wanted. RNG is still doing a fantastic job of defending in this game. Hot lane, Toby, and he gets spotted out though, Kaka, he's the one getting jumped here on the Earth Shaker, but he does have the Aeon Disc, meanwhile from the backside, Kataomi, he's got that tree falling in X Nova, he's gonna go down, but the immediate buyback is there as Ghost now, man's up against Pure, it's a lot of damage onto that Lycan, but he backs his way out, and the Hex is out, Ghost is in big trouble, the Ice Blast will connect, and he is gone, but he does have buyback. They've still got the options here on RNG. Not going to immediately pop that buyback. Entity, this is their opening. They need to find something off the back of this. Start to rip into the high ground. As we approach the 19 minute mark here, onto the high ground they go. And they go once again. Divine Rapier now combined by RTB. <laughs> Vagons are out by our AA. Everyone's just buying out as much as they can. The D3 Tower. Siege, Somnus trying to defend by himself, Entity just understanding the buyback is available for Ghost, do not want to throw a team fight back the way of RNG, but they are going to pop that Wolf Form again on Pure, just trying to get the job done, Somnus, he'll get hexed up, there's a tree volley on Tex Nova, but he's barely going to survive the Ice Blast, might connect, but it shouldn't be enough damage, and it won't, Entity still just focusing down the bot lane of Barracks, the Pit of Malice will lock them down, just taking down all the familiars. Somnus moving in with more stuns available. Stormstormer. Again, gonna back off. Really that is a big, time. big splitter. It really is. And here we go again. Yeah. That's a big fish up. They're not done yet, Entity. They're gonna keep trying. Hex is up. Kataomi just gonna slowly walk his way out. More stuns are just permanent stunning Toby here in this, in this bottom lane. There's nothing he can do about it. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're on to Chalice now. They've got the Underlord, but he's going to be KP available. He's going to be just fine as the gaze now X Nova. Look at that range onto Toby. But the Aeon is, it's going to save the day once again as Ghost. He does move in with the Terror Wave, but it's not going to matter. They just don't have the lockdown. No, they don't have a lockdown, but Entity can't clear out the racks or make a path for themselves onto the Tier Force. They do have Roshan up. They've got the double damage scouted out here. They've got the blessing into the Roche. Another cell. I mean, at this point, the axe stuff. You're gonna be. You gonna talk about Roshan again? <laughs> you wanna talk about Roshan again? John? What number is it at now? I can't count. You even can't count. Nah, I'd say I want to say eight or nine, but I can't be sure. Refresh out on Toby just to ensure they take this next Roche no problems. RNG though, smoke up. Close by. They're gonna try. They don't wanna let this Roshan go down. Toby and Pure. Round. 
Oh no, they're ending. They're ending. No, oh, they are ending. The guy could be ancient. RNG is going to get away with it. They go. RNG, can they get it done? The clip is there. They are moving back to rotate back in. This could be the play of the century as RNG. They're trying. X Nova in big trouble. They're pure. Should drop. Meanwhile, Somnus still you going. Guys. In the meantime, goes. He's had enough. He's popping his BKBs right up to the edge. And he goes. The oh, he couldn't sunder. He couldn't sunder. Oh, he couldn't sunder. He, they are not going to be able to end. Oh, what man. in the hell am I watching? That's what you want to see. You take the risk, you try to go in. I mean, tier fours are down. They're playing defense of the Ancients now, and Entity's in. They have to defend. There's a Divine Rapier on the deck. Literally nobody cares, Jonathan. I kind of women care, I guess. He picks it up. It's his Divine Rapier. That's why he cares, John. Eh. Oh. It's all right. All right. Just cleaning up some pollution here. But now, now the next time Chalice decides to do that, Ancients exposed. Fortify, down. They just need to... Find a way to get back there, because you can always do funky stuff like that. This, it's Underlord. You see your creep wave shoving up top. You sneak in, and yeah, this is this is Dota. This is literally the name of the game. This is it. Uh, Entity are in a very awkward position. They do take Roche. They've got the security of Aegis. They have everything else that they're not going to need there, unfortunately, as everyone already has the Ag's blessing up. The refresh is nice. The is nice as well. Oh, here we go. Jealous. He's got Bane Creep up in 7 seconds. Are they going to try again? Uh, it's risky. They need to fix that mid. They need to ensure their top lane is shoved out completely as well. And it's not quite shoved ugly enough to eat through back door. So they're going to have to play defensively in RNG send an entity. I mean, they know something's up. Divine's gone from Ghost. Not going to be hitting as hard. They haven't managed to hold on to the buyback though throughout this entire time. Back into the bot racks they go, entity. And they are, they are really trying to get this Rax finally down, but Ghost has respawned. They do at least find the range Rax. Yes. Ghost has bought a death and they're going. Oh, they're going to the Fire Ranger once again. He's got the rotation. They're going to try it, but Ghost, he's got the terror wave. They're just going to man up through this. The Echo's not being committed. RNG, have they gone too far? Or are they going to be able to make it? It doesn't seem like it. They are going to drop. Once again, they will go down. They've got buybacks available, though. Oh this game God. is not over yet. Ah, uh, it ain't over till it's over. It ain't over until the Ancient falls over, and neither side is any closer. That I mean, RNG gets a few steps closer. They had no creep wave. Backward was there, but they tried to counteract it. You know what that reminds me of, Mike? But don't. That reminds me of when a good old local boy Pondo sold his hags and went for a <laughs> desolator and tried to backward as well. That's the same thought process, but it doesn't quite work uh, out here. Don't, 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 you know he gets a big head when you bring the table. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, he's from here, so yeah. throw his head as big as he wants for now. Yeah. 113k lead on Entity, and that brings them nowhere closer to ending this game just yet. Tatoemi, he's in that wolf form once again, John. They are not done. Back towards that poor Rax they go. They want the Mega Creeps up. Entity, they are going to find it. Kaka, he's in with the fish shot. One lane of barracks now left for Entity to try and aim for him. That's the top side, but they're going for the T4 Towers. They've had enough of this game. They're off the Vintage, though. They could have him. Stormstormer, he's in big trouble. Somnus will keep moving forward. Stormstormer, he does go into that stone form. He'll survive for now. Is RNG. They will go for a reset. Or do they? Backing off the Stormstormer, they go. They want the Vintage. They've got him down. But he's got buyback. He can rejoin the team fight if necessary. For now, no need. RNG, they'll continue defending. But they hang on. It does cost them a lot with those two buybacks, so options are growing limited here for RNG. I saw a refresh. Yeah. It was that. Refreshing out just to get more use out, I believe, that Mike. I want to say. I can't even tell. There's just too much going on. But what RNG needs to do now, right? Entity's got the right top process, just bash their heads against the wall, get Katomi forward. Siege away. RNG needs to free up the top lane. That's the only lane they've got the advantage in. Needs to free it up and back door sub lane. Somnus, he's gonna be okay. In fact, the turnaround now back in onto the tiny, but the tiny is fine. Everyone's got a BKB. Everyone walks out of there just safe and sound. Reset. Come back another day. 112k, 96 minutes in. I think that's the longest that we've been together for together in one spot at the same time. Six minutes in. It's only our third round, Jonathan. That's fair.
Don't get all sentimental on me, John. Look, look at me in the eyes, I'll make you. Same with you. I mean, we're, we're approaching the 100 minute mark. You know, at this point, I would say it's fair. Hand in two more item slots at this point. Yeah. Make the ancient attack when it's yeah. under attack, when the tier fours are gone. I love this game. I hope it literally never ends, John. I hope <laughs> this goes on forever. This is I, an amazing game. For it has a very high chance of not ending. I, I'm still baffled that X Nova's only level 23. Hey! So he just gets rid of the X person. He just right. denies it all. How rude of him. It's just there. It's, it's littering. You know, every, almost everyone's upgraded except the side of RNG. They don't want to give the free axe away onto X Nova. AoE Synergy's third gaze actually would be pretty good in this game. So you don't want to hand that off. Haka could make great work of jumping around with a chance as well. And no one checked it anyway. So uh, if you don't see the axe blessing being denied, does it really disappear? Very good, good question done. Bot lane, a great question. Can Sumner survive through this one? But now at least he can, just trying to walk his way up. But he's surrounded and once the ethereal ends, he is down. In goes the, the X Nova, oh. trying to chase down the Lich. A nice fisher look from Kaka, gonna make sure he's fine. X Nova, still fine. Pit of Malice is out into the Chain Frost. They just want to make sure Toby can't keep chasing back Toby. Dropping so tight, load this Chain Frost. When does it end? It won't be enough in the end. Toby's gonna be alright. You've got the Divine and Fishman now. With the Axe Blessing on him, and his own Divine that oh, he buys out. There we go. Yeah, this is what we were talking about. This is how you end the game. This is it. This should be it, granted. And if somehow Fisherman dies in that, which honestly is an AA, isn't too, isn't too hard to do. And that could help RNG hold on once more. But they have, they really have all the tools they need. The, this massive Tiny, this massive AA. Uh, if, or RNG, if they manage to hold on somehow, and that's, I know what to say. Oh, here we go. Your three tower top lane, still up. Ghost will take care of it with the Terra Wave, just pushing back all the remnants. Though Kataomi will go for a tree volley, but not gonna be able to get any damage off onto Ghost. Toby gonna move back in, does find a tier three tower. So that's the tier three goal. Up to the racks they go. Got the mid lane to go through as well as Entity. Familiars getting the job done. Eventually, that is the ghost trying to slow them down the best he possibly can. It's out early on. Indeed, in goes the tiny, though the hex is out into the fissure, and now the chain frost for Kataomi. He does have a BKB up, so he's going to be just fine. Back his way up. On to the top racks they go. They do get hit him out of stuff. Just everyone being rooted here by Chalice. Ice Blast is gonna fly through onto Ghost, but there's gonna be no follow-up. They just want the Megas. Onto Pure though. He does get caught on the left side. The refresh is there by Somnus, but it leads to nothing. Is now Kataomi. He does move in onto Toby. Onto that Brewmaster. Can they take him down? Not quite. Aeon Disc is there once again. though. Toby. He is dropping low now. He might just drop and does, but he's got buyback. And I know Mega Creeps are up, it literally means nothing. No. And it does make it easier for Entity to kind of pressure into the high ground. It will leave RNG stuck in their high ground as well, but they've been stuck there for a very long time. What it does do is take away the potential for RNG to try to go for that cheeky Ancient play. That's fair. Like, they are not going to be able to shove out the lane safely anymore and make their way onto the Ancient to try to force the end. They, they, they haven't been able to repeat it. They tried it last time, didn't quite pay off. So we're crossing the barrier here, Mike. A hundred minute game. Yeah. It's RNG clanging on. A hundred twenty-seven K deficit and making entity work for every single game they get on this map. Welcome to TI, Jonathan. Welcome to TI. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a game it's been so far in this best of one. Elimination Zoda, nothing's more entertaining than that. RNG not out of this game yet. Still pushing out the mid lane, and I suppose you did make a fair point, Johnny. It's going to be hard to rat the base now if you are RNG. The wave is naturally just to keep pushing in over and over again. Luckily for them, they've been dealing with this for roughly 101 minutes now, so they should be pretty used to it on the side of RNG. So they are going to move in through the mid lane, see if they can try to force a fight against these mega creeps. Rather against the side of entry with the Megas and in they go. Ice Blast is there. Chalice gonna be targeted. Here comes the Jelly Touch. It's a lot of damage for Chalice. He does have the Crimson Guard to protect us now. They move in onto Summon with the Terra Wave. Goes to Zell. On to Kataomi. He'll try to focus him down, but the Wolf Form allows him to get away as it seems like they need to try and reset. RNG, it's not the fight they wanted. They just can't lock him down long enough. In goes Pure though. On to X Nova. The Fisher was not there in time to block him off. X Nova still actually being left alone here by Pure. Instead, he sees Chalice on the Underlord. He'll abyssal blade him up. Chalice in huge trouble. Should drop surely. Eventually, as he gets surrounded and will go down.
No buyback available on the Underlord. Zex Nova, he's going to go down to the Ice Blast of Fishman. Will buy back immediately. Chalice, he needs another minute to be able to buy back into this game. Guess what? Roshan's up. Yeah, but a double damage rune as well. On to the next Rosh. Entity goes. And RNG on their backs. Eighth Rosh. Backs. Ninth, tenth. It's li it literally says eight. eight. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm just very You can't read either. I can't read either. Ro eighth Roshan melting. Uh, probably just deny the Axe Blessing once more. Smoke out and Entity look to make this game end. 102 minutes in, RNG. And they've been holding for <laughs> such a long time. They've been able to just play their hearts out, but it's so tough with how well Entity's killing. Even just the damage from Fishman. It, it's no joke. No, it certainly is not. You see the, uh, the Axe Blessing getting denied off once again there by Toby. This does not like the being left alone. 60 seconds without Chalice, but buy back up in three seconds. It's not really too big of an issue here for RNG. They are up against the Aegis, they're up against the Cheese, they're up against the Refresher Shards. It's not that easy as Chalice. Immediately, no hesitation, will pop buy back. Not messing around, doesn't want to lose these tier 4 towers. The creeps are pushing in. Again, I mean, they've been patient for two hours now. They may as well keep being a little bit more patient. Katsuhomi, the form is oh. there. Double damage rune. Avalanche toss back. They've got a big target on Chalice. They've love a dieback right now. Goes. He's going to try and jump in and save the day. Refresh is out. Terror Wave is out as well. Toby, he's the one to drive back. No buyback available. That was a dieback on the Brewmaster. Can they find more? It seems like for now they're going to hold because the creeps are moving into the base. Turns out the make creeps are in fact doing something, Jonathan. Yeah. Very, very pop. It makes just it makes it so hard for RNG to try to get anything done outside. They do manage to hold on though. Again, entity with 129k. It's, <laughs> it's not enough. RNG still has bite in them. RNG still has a way of playing. They they have a way of holding. And they do have 25 up on X Nova. He does opt for the chain frost now, and there's not much to really defend with a regen on the frost shield but they've got a good way of just holding back. And if they manage to keep at least one wave shoved in, I mean, they don't have to hear force to rip through here, Mike. Yeah. The Ancient is exposed. It certainly is. They just need to keep that creep wave alive somehow. It certainly is. They've got the Fiend's Gate available if they wanted to try and abuse it. Parker, going for a fish, going to miss. Somnus, he's right in as well. In fact, it's Ghost that we need to watch right now on this TV. They've got to find down. That's two divine from the deck. Is this the turning point now? Because they found another. It's going to be the Aegis down on the Visage. He'll respawn very, very soon. Toby, he's still got no buyback. They're back up to Storm Stormer. They might just have him, and it seems like they do. He is going to drop, but he does have buyback. Oh, this is just... They're still going. Fishman, he's going to drop a second time, but pure. He's going to be all right to back his way out as Katahomi now getting oh. caught out. On the oh. tiny, he might drop to Boo. And he does. Pure, he does lose back in Chalice. He's going to drop. That's two down without buyback for the side of RNG. How do they do it now? Well, I mean, their, their tier fours are going to be under siege. Someone's got to go back and hold. None of their creep waves are shoved out. It's back to just having these mega creeps up and we are now in the longest main stage game in ti history this is just this is in as all far as it goes we're just going further now in literally all of ti history this so is I've the longest done. game yes well there you go on the main stage this is just a marathon from both sides rng again they, they're still there they made that gold swim from 123k to 84k <laughs> <laughs> i mean that, that is that's the biggest gold swing we've ever seen and multiple divines being dropped uh, they're rushing level 30 talent up on Ghost now for the Sunder cooldown. And despite that win, because of the Mega Creeps, RNG are still stuck here. So they're gonna need to repeat that process again, Mike. Here we they go. They need to knock him out one more time. Get started. Away. They've got Ghost with a toss back. The TB official blade is out. He's gonna go down. He's got buyback. He'll commit immediately. It's gonna be a 4v3 situation. RNG are being trouble. And Somnus dropping low. Pops the block zone. Tries to rub it. It's not gonna make it out. He'll buy back as well. This could be the opening though. Entity needed. They can go on to those T4 towers. They've got the mid creeps incoming. Ghost. He's 
going to find a way to fight. Kaka, he's in with the Echo Slam. And the Fisher locks them down. Tear away Villa oh. with the Wolf Form. It allows them to just keep running as Kanaumi still trying, trying to fight back. Storm Stormer, Tree Volley, everything through Throne at Ghost, but it's going to be a lot. The tieback is there. RNG are in huge trouble now. It's a 2v4 situation. Surely there is no way to defend this. The Somnus will try one last time, but it's over. Or is it? Uh, they paused the game at a very awkward time. Fisher's out. It's all over. Oh the big surround the ancient. GD is called eventually. Entity barely managed to do it. Well, uh, 107 minutes in. I, I don't know what else to say here, John. Oh, that, that's just insane. I don't think the longest game in the main stage ever. And my god, Entity, what what an amazing game they played. But props to RNG as well. They held on when it just looked like they weren't able, they weren't supposed to. Yeah. But they hung on for so long. Like and nice. Entity, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it just took way too long. But they do manage to ride on. And the crowd's loving it. What a game between these two titans. Uh, an incredible game here. Of course, you're seeing x -No as well. Not looking the happiest jump. This guy's probably the biggest Giga Channel on the stage right now, all by himself, without his team. Putting on a performance here with the side of RNG and Entity. Of course, happy faces from them right now. Just You almost had a two-hour game. You, you've got to be smiling after that one. As was x -No again. Has to walk off by himself. But he's a Giga Chad, you jump. He, he did phenomenal for not having his team physically around him. And RNG, again, considering that they're all, you know, staying safe right now, separated up, they put up a hell of a fight. And it's such a shame. This team has gone so far. They managed to fight against those odds really well. The handshake coming out. Yeah, yeah it's just such a good game. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought they almost had it there, RNG, at the end as well. Like, just, just all over the place. It's hard to know who was in the lead. You hear the crowd very, very happy here, Anthony. Yeah, a fantastic job once again. Make